Wow! One more information about Flight 4. While the rumors around Starship's next flight are spreading rapidly on social media, recently a senior SpaceX figure, Gwyn Shotwell, spoke up to dispel these rumors. Clearly, compared to public opinion's excessive expectations, Shotwell's answer somewhat brings us closer to reality. What the SpaceX president just revealed about Starship Flight 4 shocked others. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. At the Satellite 2024 conference on March 19, the president and chief operating officer of SpaceX said SpaceX would be ready for the next Starship launch in just, could you believe, six weeks. It's safe to say that Starship's turnaround speed has been pushed higher than ever. If successful, it will be SpaceX's new record set for this year, which no vehicle can achieve in its wild days. As you can see, a less powerful rocket from SpaceX, Falcon 9 took five months on average between its initial launches, or NASA's SLS took many years to lift off the ground. Referring to Flight 4 plans, SpaceX representatives also provided some valuable information. First of all, it's the answer to the speculation about the payload on the next Starship prototype, because Ship 25's explosion in November was caused by the lack of payload leading to venting oxygen. Some speculated that Ship 28 or 29 would carry a payload, Starlink for example. What's more, Elon Musk has once said SpaceX's goal was to deploy Starlink V3 this year. Yes, it's true. We will witness satellites on Starship as a payload, but not in Flight 4. In the conference, Shotwell said that the company doesn't expect to deploy Starlink satellites on the next Starship launch. Things are still in trade, but I think we're really going to focus on getting re-entry right and making sure we can land these things where we want to land them. It seems like doing everything step by step has always been SpaceX's preferred strategy. Their focus now is on getting the vehicle operational in advance. Then there will be the deployment of the satellites recovery of both stages and rapid turnaround on those phases. To make Starship operational soon, researching data after each flight test is a compulsory thing. According to Gwynny Shotwell, the company is still studying data from Starship's third launch. We're still going through the data from the flight, she said when asked about the analysis of data from the mission. It was an incredibly successful flight. We hit exactly where we wanted to go. We'll figure out what happened on both stages, she added, not discussing what may have gone wrong with either, and get back to flight hopefully in about six weeks or early May. It can be said that collecting data after the flight is one of the most important tasks. It's because the goal of these flight tests is to gather crucial data so that engineers can go back and tinker with Starship, improving it for future missions. This process is scheduled to last for several coming weeks along with upgrading and testing the hardware. These data also might be helpful for the SpaceX-led mishap investigation. A mishap investigation is designed to further enhance public safety, determine the root cause of the event, and identify corrective actions to avoid it from happening again. I'm sure that this investigation will not hit any obstacle thanks to Flight 3's success. Not only SpaceX's representative, but also the Federal Aviation Administration confirmed this, in a post-launch FAA statement, a mishap occurred during the SpaceX Starship Flight 3 mission that launched from Boca Chica, Texas, on March 14. The mishap involved both the Super Heavy booster and the Starship vehicle. No public injuries or public property damage have been reported, the agency statement points out. Kelvin Coleman, FAA Associate Administrator for Commercial Space Transportation, speaking at the Space Capital 3 event by payload on March 18, said he does not expect this investigation to reveal any major problems that could significantly delay the next launch. It ended in what we call a mishap, but at the end of the day, we deem it a successful launch attempt, he said, because it resulted in no injuries or property damage. SpaceX was able to collect a great deal of data from that launch. Coleman said he expects SpaceX to provide an investigation report into the incident quickly. He noted that, after Starship's second flight, the company completed this report within a few weeks. We expect the same to be the case here. We didn't see anything major. We don't think there's any critical systems for safety that were implicated. The FAA has updated SpaceX's Starship launch license after every flight to date to reflect changes in the mission such as the different suborbital trajectories used on the most recent flight.
However, Coleman said the agency wants to move to a process where the license is valid for a portfolio of launches rather than individual ones. That is particularly important, he added, because SpaceX is planning six to nine more Starship launches this year. That is part of a broader effort to streamline the launch licensing process to address criticism from industry and Congress that the FAA is moving too slowly on approving launch licenses under a new set of regulations known as Part 450. For those who don't know, Part 450 reflects the requirements for obtaining and maintaining a license to launch or re-enter, or the license for both launch and re-enter, or a launch or re-entry vehicle. Coleman announced at the FAA Commercial Space Transportation Conference on February 21 that the agency would establish an aerospace rulemaking committee to formally collect industry input on ways to improve Part 450. The reflight schedule will depend on the completion of the investigation into the third flight. It must be approved by the FAA, which will then have to amend Starship's existing launch license before the next launch. Based on the above information, it is seen that everything is going so smoothly. The flight took place as expected, meaning there were only a few minor errors and not causing serious damage to the community. As a result, SpaceX's data collection can happen faster, and they have old information from previous flights so it's easy to make any comparisons, which leads to new improvements. FAA also gets more comfortable in handling the post-launch procedure. This is in stark contrast to before flights one and two, where it took the national agency too long to complete the necessary paperwork for a launch license. Prior to the first Starship integrated test flight on April 20, 2023, the FAA official said the agency spent more than 500 days reviewing the application, which SpaceX amended several times during the launch preparation. That is the longest the agency has spent on a single launch license application. That official noted that extended time was also due to the complexity of the application and the size of the vehicle, the largest ever to seek a commercial launch license. That created, the official said, a strain on the resources available to the agency to both review that application and work on other license applications. The journey to get the FAA's green light for Flight 2 in November last year was not all so much brighter. The first test's aftermath caused a series of troubles and stress for SpaceX, FAA, and environmental groups. And the participation of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service as a consultor on an updated biological assessment under the Endangered Species Act made the situation more complicated. The FAA wrapped up its investigation of the April 20 launch mishap in early September and on October 31, the agency announced it had finished a safety review ahead of the second Starship flight. However, we had to wait until November 15 to get a permit for the next flight. Seven months for a type of paper is a nightmare for any rocket test. We have to give SpaceX a lot of credit for trying to make Flight 2 as safe as possible. Thanks to that, it only took the company four months to complete everything for Flight 3. So with Flight 4's launch date in early May, meaning less than two months from now, why not believe in that possibility? How about you? Do you have any idea about the timeline of Flight 4? Let me know in the comments section below. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.